What's going on everyone? Welcome back to more salt. Yes, I know my walls are bare behind me. It's because we're moving in a couple of months and we've started packing up and boxing everything together, taking things off the walls. You know how it goes. So for a couple more months, you're gonna be seeing this as my background for the recipe videos. I'm trying to use the exposed brick as much as I can to compensate for it. Anyway, who cares? Let's get to the recipe. Today I will be showing you how to make bangin' ass vegan nachos that are so good. All of the components for this recipe come together in a beautiful way and make an amazing, epic plate of nachos. So I'm excited for you guys to try it. We're gonna start by making our vegan queso. So to a high speed blender, you are gonna add three quarter cups of soaked cashews, one and a quarter cup of almond milk, one tablespoon of miso, two tablespoons of lemon juice, two teaspoons of cumin, two teaspoons of garlic powder, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, and a few pinches of salt. Then you're gonna blend it until really, really smooth. You don't want any grittiness left over from the cashews. Then you're gonna saute about half of an onion or one small onion. And I'm not using any oil to saute this, so as it starts to brown in the pan, you can add in some vegetable stock to keep things moving and to deglaze the pan. After the onions have been sauteing for two or three minutes, you can add in half a cup of diced tomatoes and a couple of tablespoons of green chilies. Mix that together and continue to cook for two or three more minutes and then add in your queso. Then you can cook everything together and simmer until the sauce has thickened. Now it's time to make our black beans. So you're gonna take a 16 ounce bag of dried black beans, along with three quarter cups of diced onions, three quarter cups of celery, three quarter cups of carrots, two or three cloves of garlic, about a half cup of diced tomatoes, one quart of vegetable stock, and a couple tablespoons of tomato paste, and of course, some salt to taste. I will be using my Instant Pot to cook my beans. It is a magical, magical machine that cooks dried beans and rice really, really well. So I'm gonna be using the manual function and all you do is put everything into the Instant Pot, all the ingredients for your beans, mix it together, put the lid on, set it to manual mode and add 24 minutes on the timer and then just let it do its thing. And then the last thing you wanna to remember to do is to set the nozzle thing at the top to sealing, not venting. And this is what they look like when they're fully cooked. If you like your beans a little bit harder, I would do about like 22 minutes, but I like mine pretty well cooked. And they taste really great if you store them in the fridge overnight and then reheat them the next day. They have a perfect, amazing, thick consistency that's not too thick, and the taste is phenomenal. It's way better than canned beans. Now it's time to make our guacamole. So you're gonna need one avocado, you're gonna pit it and then scoop out the insides. And you can mash it with your hands or a fork, whatever works. You really only need three things to make amazing guacamole. The first one being salt, so add a few pinches here. And then lime juice, that is probably the most important ingredient. A lot of people don't add enough lime juice to their guac. And every time I make it for them, they try it and they're like, oh my God, this is the most amazing guac I've ever tasted. And I'm like, yeah, it's because I added enough lime juice. So if I could give you one tip to making banging guacamole is to add a shit ton of lime juice. And then of course I add some cilantro because I love it. I know there's some cilantro haters out there, but um, if you hate it, don't add it. Just skip this part. And then after that, you can taste and adjust to see if you need anything else, some more salt, some more lime juice. I'm gonna add some more lime juice. And there you have it, amazing, perfect guacamole. 
Next up is the rice. So you're gonna cook jasmine rice however you normally cook it. And then after it's done cooking, you can add cilantro and fresh lime juice. So this is the cilantro lime rice that you would get at Chipotle. Although Chipotle adds a shit ton of oil to the rice, so this is oil free, so it's a lot lighter and healthier. Now it's time to assemble. So I'm starting mine off with some tortilla chips and then the rice. And you don't even have to use tortilla chips if you wanna make more of a burrito bowl. That's perfectly fine. It'll be just like going to Chipotle, but way better. Then I added some fresh pico de gallo, olives, and scallions, but you can add whatever you want. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and tell me if you're gonna try this yourself at home, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. I love you guys so much. Take care of yourselves this week, eat good food, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.